What's up, everybody? Welcome to MCE. As always, I'm George, and this is the Collecting News segment where I talk about statues and collectibles that I found throughout the week and put it all into a fun and condensed format for you guys. Beginning, middle, end. Facts, details, condense, plot, tell it. So I hope everybody's having a great week so far. I'm having a pretty special one myself. Uh, first of all, we had our first uh, full eclipse in uh, 100 years, so that's pretty exciting, pretty cool stuff that happened on Monday. And what made it even more special for me was my daughter was actually born in the height of the eclipse. So uh, I can't uh, express how uh, blessed I feel right now. It was, uh, it was a long uh, labor for my wife and um, you know I was scared for a moment, but uh, it looks like everything turned out great. So I'm just saying, since she was born in the full eclipse, you know, I think she's entitled to some superpowers. What do you guys think? So I got a chance to break away for a little bit so I can get you guys the news you've been waiting for. So let's get right to it. All right, so pre-orders so far have been a little bit light at the beginning of this week, but the major one that we had was from Pop Culture Shock. Uh, they released their Doslam statue on Monday. And like I've said before, I, I find this statue to be pretty fantastic. It was definitely one of my favorite surprises of San Diego Comic-Con when I was there. Uh, really cool looking piece, loving the whole dynamic pose that they have going on there with arms wrapping around and all that. Uh, definitely uh, is, is a good uh, representation of the character from the video game. Uh, and what I like most about it is, is that Dazlam is not even one of my favorite characters. It just, I think the statue looks so cool that I want to pick him up. Uh, he's running $474.99, but if you go on their site and pay for it in total, uh, they'll give you a discount and it could run about uh, $399. So it's a pretty good discount for, for paying for it in total. Uh, it's due for release between August and October of 2018. All right, and then I found this Majin Vegeta statue that looks freaking badass from KD Collectibles. Uh, I think that they captured the scene from that episode superbly. Uh, has such explosive energy with that base. Uh, really digging how the base is simple and elegant down at the bottom, but then it places you right in the scene uh, with all of that energy just being exploded around uh, Vegeta. It looks so cool. Uh, Vegeta himself is sculpted very fantastically also. Uh, loving the bulging muscles and the... Uh, ripped veins there. He just looks like he's about to come out of himself. Uh, really cool looking piece. So the same Prince is running $419 and it's expected to ship out by the end of this year. All right, and then lastly, DC Collectibles released their Superman versus the Flash race statue. Uh, this one is sculpted by one of my favorite artists, Alejandro Pereira Escura, and this thing looks fantastic in my opinion. Uh, again, just like with the other statue that I spoke about, uh, it has that base that's very nice and simple and elegant. Uh, but it places you right in the scene with that road uh, being torn apart by Flash with his electric speed and, the, and then Superman with the uh, smoke. Uh, I think that was a really nice effect. Uh, they sculpted the uh, anatomies of both of these characters, I think, uh, very well. Uh, looks just like both of them. Uh, their portraits look fantastic. Uh, and it's a pretty fun looking statue. So very cool. So I actually found this one at the Big Bad Toy Store at a discount for $244.99. Uh, it's due for release in March of next year. All right, and that's it for what I found for the most notable pre-orders at the beginning of this week. Uh, I'm sure that there's going to be more coming out towards the end of the week, and we'll talk about that on the next episode. Uh, again, if you're looking to get any of these, I left the links in the description below for you guys to get to them. All right, so announcements. First of all, Tor Studios gave us a look at their up-and-coming journey into the Thunder Bluff diorama that they have coming out. What I'm really digging about Tor Studios and what they've been doing with the Warcraft series is they really capture what I remember it felt like to play the video game. Uh, you know, with this diorama, is just another example of it. It shows the Tauren at the very top of the cliff uh, laughing at the two gnomes that are, having, are struggling going up the lift to get to the top. Uh, it looks like one of them is about to fall off and he's hanging on for dear life and then the other one appears to be reaching out to her pet or uh, summoning. It looks like to be some kind of elemental. Um, it has a lot of humor in this piece which I think is really cool and it really does look like what I remember from the video game. So I think it's a great job. Now, from what they said, the addition size is only going to be 100, but they haven't released the pre-order as of yet. So I'll keep you guys updated as soon as I find out more. All right, and then ARH gave us a look at their Arhean Headhunter statue, and she looks beautiful. First of all, I'm a big fan of any pirate theme, and I think this one captures that essence pretty well. Uh, really digging the museum-style pose. It looks like something very easy to display in your cabinet. I think having the whole cross and bones at the bottom of the base was a fantastic touch. I think the sculpted pose captures a great amount of attitude and life for this character. I'm also really digging the way they did the texture work and the design of the whole costume in itself. And the portrait looks gorgeous. I can't wait to see more on her. 
All right, and then Iron Studios gave us a full reveal of their Wonder Woman one-third statue that's coming out. And Iron Studios, I feel, is doing a great job with their one-third scales. Their Batman statues looked outstanding, and their Wonder Woman is no different. I saw this one at San Diego Comic-Con, and I thought it was pretty impressive there. What I found out now is that it comes with the swapped-out portrait for the traditional sculpt, which I think that looks great. Uh, you can swap out the hands from the sword and shield to having her holding the lasso of truth. And when you don't want to display it like that, you can always have the lasso of truth strapped at her belt. The optional cape in the back is something that you could swap out and in, which is cool for me because I wouldn't display it with the cape. And the base lights up, so I think that's a pretty neat touch as well. Now on the Iron Studio side, they're saying that the Wonder Woman statue is going to be coming up for pre-order here pretty soon. Uh, they state that it's going to be $999 US. I'm really hoping Sideshow picks this one up so it can save us a little bit in shipping and sometimes it's a little bit cheaper from them. So I'm going to wait to see if Sideshow gets this one, but I'm looking forward to seeing more on her. All right, and then Level 52 Studios gave us a trailer of their cat girl statue that's going to be coming out here pretty soon. If you haven't checked this one out already, you really should. It's a really cool looking statue. All right, other than the fact that this one, in my opinion, is one of the best tributes to Frazetta's art style, one of the things about the statue that I think is really cool is that the eyes light up. And I know that we've seen other statues that have light up features, but this is a paint that reacts to the light source. So it glows in the dark, which I think is really cool. You know, it means you're not going to have to need any batteries or any kind of wires to plug into a wall. This is something that will react on its own, which I think is a really cool effect. They also revealed the price. This one's going to run $649.99. They still haven't uh, determined an edition size and they still haven't brought up exactly when the pre-order is going to start. But as soon as we find out more information, we'll let you guys know. All right, and the HMO gave us a look at their production photo for their Morgan statue that's going to be coming out. They also announced that this one's going to be at Singapore Comic Con. So we're really excited to see how this one's going to turn out. So far, I think they've been doing a great job with their Bounties of Bathos series and their video game lines. So can't wait to see more on this one. All right, so then XM Studios gave us a look at their Predator statue that's going to be coming out here pretty soon. They also revealed that the fully painted prototype is going to be unveiled at Singapore Comic Con, so we're really excited for that. It looks like they're doing a pretty good job with all of the paintwork and the texture they have going on with this character. It looks like it's just going to be another outstanding piece from XM Studios, so can't wait to see more on him. So remember, if you're looking to get any HMO or XM Studios pieces, contact Parma Doll. He can hook you up with a pre-order at a great price. All right, so cool customs. Rounding at the top this week, we got the look at the now final completed version of the Aquaman statue by Juan Pitluck. And I'm absolutely loving what he did with this piece. It has so much dynamic appeal and energy resonating from it. The base is beautiful with the brown rock and the mixture of the aqua green and the bright blue sea water cascading over the rock in an epic splash. Makes this piece look vibrant and visually stunning. Aquaman himself looks like he's about to command his forces to attack. He looks regal and the texture work on his suit looks superb. And you have the option for a classic portrait or a hand that swaps out to like a hook trident style. So I think that's pretty cool too. Again, as always, excellent work from Juan. Thanks for sharing. All right, so a few weeks ago, Del Riego Art gave us a look at a Ghost Rider sculpt that he was working on. He decided to change that up. It's because there are so many Ghost Riders that have been released with him on the motorcycle. So I think that was a pretty cool idea. It's always good to be different. So what he brought us was a new sculpt of the Ghost Rider, but this time it's the version of Carter Slade with him on the horse, which I think looks outstanding. I'm really digging the flaming base with him on the cliff. The horse itself looks frightening but majestic. And I'm really digging the way they have Ghost Rider himself with the chain whipping around him. Has a lot of dynamic appeal. Now again, this one's still a work in progress, but I can't wait to see more on him. So great work, Nelson. All right, and then lastly, we have one epic beast to share with you. This is the Drogon and Daenerys by Sheridan Deuce. Now I've been watching the Game of Thrones since the beginning, and we've seen these dragons grow from the little babies that they were in the first season all the way to the massive beast that they are now. And I feel that Sheridan captured the impressive energy and life of these characters from the show in this one statue perfectly. All right, so first off, the base sets the scene, placing a square at the end of season six, where Daenerys and Drogon return to save Marine. Amelia Clark's likeness from the show is executed perfectly. It looks identical to Daenerys. Now, she may be the mother of dragons, but she takes second place in the scene because her largest and most powerful child, Drogon, is letting his heroic presence be known. The texture work throughout Drogon's body is a masterpiece. So much to look at, so much beauty and violence all wrapped up into one character. The way his wings are spread out like that lets us see his impressive size. This one's going to stand about 26 inches tall. And his portrait looks exquisite. It's definitely one of the best looking dragon statues I've ever seen sculpted. I can totally see this one at the top of one of my displays. It just looks fantastic. Outstanding work on this one. All right, guys, so that's our show. I hope you had a good time. If you did, you know, give us a thumbs up. If you're new here, please hit subscribe. 
We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter if you ever feel like chatting. And the Marvelous Statues group is always looking for new members. I left links in the description below for you guys to get to it. We're going to be coming back at you with more original shows like the Marvelous Statues unboxing and reviews, the What's Popping video, which talks all about uh, pop figures, and of course, our new segments. So stay tuned for that. And until then, see you next time.